Lawyers for Human Rights that has been involved with the refugees since 2019 when they started camping outside the UN offices here in Brooklyn. They have expressed concern with the latest developments, in particular where it is about the dignity and the human rights of the refugees that are here. Deborah Raduba from the Lawyers for Human Rights join me right now. Deborah. What's the latest? Um, so in terms of the court order, the refugees are, are going to be evicted this Friday from the premises and be taken to Lindela detention facility as alternative accommodation. And if there's any, um, if there's no compliance with that, then they are, may be arrested. We understand that there are a lot of children here. We've seen some of them are quite small children. Um, many of them have not been schooling since uh, 2019. Take us through that. So they, before that they were staying in Lindela as well, and there's no access to education from that point. It's, it's an isolated detention facility, which is not a good place for children to stay or anybody to stay if they're not a detainee. And while this is, if they go with their parents to Lindella, there's an issue. Again, this is prolonging their education, their access to education, and just it's not general good conditions for children to be staying in. Now, for those who do not understand, it's a very complex uh, situation. Um, uh, we saw what happened in 2019. Of course, it's a situation that stems from uh, the 2019 uh, xenophobic uh, violence that broke out here in the capital city in Pretoria. Many of them um, ran to the UN offices. But uh, take us back about the nitty gritties of how they landed here. So. After the xenophobic attacks, the refugees and asylum seekers didn't feel safe to be integrated in society. Many of them suffered losses of their belongings and even deaths of families and, and they were harassed and hurt as a result. So they came to the UNHCR hoping to be placed in a place where their safety would not be in question. And they've just been outside hoping for some engagement and hoping for some interaction to find a tenable solution of how they can still exist in society, but safely. And so again, they were here and then there was um, an order granted for their removal. People were placed in Lindella um, as not as detainees. And then the men mostly were charged with trespassing and were taken to Hosi most of them when for a period for about two years I think only in mid last year the men were released and the women were then put back here by home affairs so it's been a to and fro and there hasn't been a tenable solution and we just scared of where we, what we fear is that it's going to be a cycle of back and forth between these spaces where people have not been able to live they haven't had their human rights they've been staying in detention facilities children have not been able to go to school um, so it's a human rights issues and there's just it's going to be a continuation of those things if not a tenable solution isn't found and surprisingly the, the court order did order for mediation between the relevant stakeholders to find a tenable solution but unfortunately um, that has that provision of the court order has just been ignored. What would be a proper solution? I believe that if everybody comes to the table all the relevant stakeholders and find a tenable solution for example I think number one a detention facility is not suitable alternative accommodation at all. I don't our position as lawyers for human rights is that should not have been provided as alternative accommodation for an eviction. Um, it's unheard of and it's a, it's a first time this is happening. And I believe that if people, relevant people, stakeholders, whether it's embassies that can accommodate people in different countries, whether it's the UNHCR and the, and the South African government coming forward saying, this is what we can do, this is what we can't do. This is this what solution we can come to, this is what we can't come to. And speaking to the refugees in the language that they understand, so they have an understanding of what's happening and what their valid options are. I think it's just been an ignore and hitting them with legal terms and and being and not anybody coming to the table and just sitting down and listening to what their needs are and communicating to them what's possible and what's not possible and the reasons why.
The latest plans to evict them stems from a court order that is linked to municipal bylaws. Tell us more about that. So it's a municipal bylaws of structures and so forth can't take place on the pavements. So it's stemmed, it's originally stemmed that they've been in violation of the bylaws by building their structures and then an interdict getting them removed. But um, when you are evicting somebody, you need to do this. So in terms of um, the Prevention of Illegal Eviction Act and as well as 20, Section 26 of three of the Constitution said it has to be done with the court order. So all those matters have been condensed in the current application to evict the refugees. Do you know how many of them are still staying here? At this moment, um, we, our idea was about 55 children and nine, overall 90 people. I believe right now there's, we're not sure if people are going, if, they, if, if people are staying. We just don't know what it's going to look like on Friday. And um, I think we're, we're dreading the, the impact and the separation of the children from the parents. And we, if the Department of Social Development gets involved, where the children are going to be taken and so forth. The Lawyers for Human Rights, yes. what's your plan of action? How are you planning to protect these refugees? Should government go ahead with their plans to remove them here by Monday? I believe that what we're going to do is a monitoring role. Um, we do intend to be here on Friday to make sure that there is due compliance with obviously a court order which cannot be um, opposed, but that there is respect of human dignity. We're going to try to make a plan with the Department of Social Development to have a list of the children so that they don't get lost in the system. We're going to make sure that people are treated fairly and um, if the people are detained, arrested or detained for any reason, that um, they can, they, we are available to represent them for, uh, we're available to consult and see how we can then assist, seeing on what the developments will be on Friday when they're due to be evicted.